All right, and, and finally, I'm going to show you a different method of uh, finding a particular solution of a non-homogeneous differential equation. So it is called variation of parameters. So uh, we have already seen the method of undetermined coefficients, but the method of undetermined coefficients, it only works in some cases. So namely, undetermined coefficients can only be applied if the right-hand side of the of our differential equation is a combination of exponential functions, trigonometric functions, uh, and polynomials, well, not just any combination. So it's a product of polynomials, uh, trigonometric functions, and exponential functions, right? So, but uh, if the right-hand side is something, something else, essentially anything else, like if it has logarithms, if it has um, something like e to the x divided by e to the x plus one, or, um, um, no, e to the x. Yeah, I guess so. It is like something like this, or maybe um, uh, even if it is just uh, secant or cosecant or tangent. So inverse trigonometric functions. So sorry, sorry, trigonometric trigonometric functions that are not just sine and cosine. So anything else. So in that case, uh, undetermined coefficients are not going to work. And variation of parameters is a different method, so it uh, works all the time, so no exceptions. But variation of parameters uh, is uh, fairly harder, fairly more complicated than undetermined coefficients. Okay, so th th that's kind of a bit of trade-off between two methods. So one is more general, so it works all the time, but it is more compl complicated than, than the other one. Now, uh, uh, so, as the name suggests, so variation of parameters, so parameters here are, you know, if we have um, a general solution of the homogeneous differential equation, so it, it comes with two parameters, C1 and C2, and uh, variation of parameters means that we are going to replace these C1 and C2 with uh, functions of x. So instead of thinking of them as constants, we are going to replace them with uh, functions of x. Okay, uh, now, um, it means that we are going to look for a particular solution uh, of a non-homogeneous differential equation in this form, where y1 and y2 are solutions of the homogeneous differential equation. Right? So th th this is important. So uh, y1 and y2 are both solutions of the homogeneous differential equation. So it means that a y1 double prime plus b y1 prime plus c y1 is going to be zero and same for for y2 so a1 uh, 2 double prime plus b y2 prime plus c y2 is going to be zero right so this is what we're going to do um, okay so now uh, how do we find c1 of x and c2 of x such that this is going to work um, well basically we're going to substitute uh, this particular solution into the non-homogeneous differential equation and uh, let's see if we can find some functions c1 of x and c2 of x that satisfy this condition right now first, first of all let, let me write down why uh, the first and second derivatives of y uh, of the, the, this particular solution, right? So notice that um, uh, c1 and c2 are functions of x, right? So when you differentiate like c1 times y1, when you differentiate this, you've got to use the product rule. So it's going to be c1 prime times y1 plus c1 times y1 prime. And now if you are, want to differentiate it one more time, so you will have to, to do something like this c1 y1 double prime is going to be c1 double prime y1 plus c1 prime y1 prime plus c1 prime y1 prime plus c1 y1 double prime right and this is basically how you how you get this equation so we see that uh the subsequent subsequent derivatives of this particular solution are fairly complicated um right but so it can it takes some certain effort to plug them back into the differential equation and, and remember that 
what we really want to do, we want to get something like a, uh, well, basically this should be, um, okay, so th this whole thing should really be equal to f of x, right? Okay, now, uh, so luckily, well, since we assumed that uh, our y1 and y2 are, in fact, solutions of the homogeneous differential equation, so due to that fact, some part of this is going to cancel out, it's going to disappear, right? So because, well, these and these parts are going to disappear because they, they're just zeros, right? Well, but still, you know, uh, a big portion still remains um, uh, remains kind of um, it remains unclear what to do with this, right? And here comes a very neat trick. So, uh, so whoever invented it in the, I guess it was maybe Lagrange or someone like that in the uh, 18th century, they were very very clever. Right, so the neat trick here is is the following. So basically, we want this to be f, right? At the same time, we have uh, two uh, two things. So like c one and c two. So we want to determine c one and c two. Well, so it's like two unknowns. Well, and if we have two unknowns. And we already have one equation, right? So one equation is that this whole thing equals f. But in order to find two unknowns, uh, we usually need two equations, right? So because, I mean, if we have two equations, then we can solve for, for the two unknowns and, uh, you know, it's going to just, just, just work. If we have uh, two unknowns and one equation, then basically it is possible to solve it, but there, there's going to be some degree of freedom. At the same time, we don't really need... Uh, this degree of freedom because we are really not interested in solving all possible um, to, to find all possible C1 and C2. So we just need to, to, to find one particular uh, combination of C, C1 and C2 that, that is going to work since we are interested in a particular solution, right? So, and in order to kind of, to make our life easier and in order to um, basically to, uh, solve um, to simplify this right so we know that one equation is going to from is, is, is going to be from the fact that this equals f so we can just invent a second equation that is going to simplify to make our life easier right and what we are going to do basically so the second equation so the, the first equation is is this that this equals to f and the second equation so we are going to require that this is zero right so c1 prime y1 plus c2 prime y2 is going to be equal to zero. This is the second equation. Now, and this is going to simplify everything tremendously because if this is zero, then it is constant zero and its first derivative is going to be zero, right? And if we differentiate this, this is going to be c1 double prime y1 plus uh, c1 prime y, oh, sorry c1 uh, prime y1 prime plus c2 double prime y2 plus c1 uh, sorry c2 prime y2 prime is also going to be equal to zero and this expression is in fact a large portion of the whatever is in the first parenthesis right so it's almost the, the same thing well except for the this plus two Right, so long story short, if we impose the, the, this condition, so basically everything here is going to, to be uh, disappear, well, except of this C1, Y1, C1 prime, Y1 prime, and C2 prime, Y2 prime. Okay. So, uh, and that's it. So we have the first condition. And we have the second condition. So, and again, so the, the second condition, it, it comes from, from the fact that we want our function to be a particular solution of the differential equation. But the first condition is just a trick invented to make our life easier because, and it works since 
we are not really interested in, in finding all possible combinations of C1 and C2, but we are looking for just one particular combination of C1 and C2. And if we uh, can find a particular combination um, of C1 and C2 that is kind of, that has the simplest possible form, then we should do that. Right, so uh, basically, so here is our second condition. And together with the first condition, so we get these um, two simultaneous equations. And now the second neat trick is, is to realize that y1 and y2 are known, right? So y1 and y2 are known. Uh, and so is f. So f is also known and f is known, right? So all the, these things are known. So it means that essentially we can think of this as a system of simultaneous equations in unknowns um, c1 prime and c2 prime and if you think of this as a system of linear equations in unknowns c1 prime and c2 prime then it's just a linear system of equations that you probably learned how to solve in secondary school and you can solve it right now in practice we don't really do this I mean, in practice, you if you want, you 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 can of course write down the, the system and just solve it from scratch for your particular combination of uh, of uh, functions and parameters. But you know, uh, this is done for you in advance. I I'm not going to go through the details because they are not really important. So it is just a system of linear equations. And basically, I will just give you the final answer, right? So the final answer is that this is the equation for C1 prime, and this is the equation for C2 prime, right? So it comes from solving an algebraic system, a linear algebraic system of equations. So it's just that you, you need to kind of a change of, of perspective. So you need to think of C1 prime and C2 prime as unknowns in your algebraic system of equations. And then you will be able to solve it because from that perspective, it's just a linear system. <laughs> All right, so that's basically it. Uh, so that's the answer. And of course, if this is C1 prime, it means that C1 itself is going to be the antiderivative of this. So minus one over A, <coughs> antiderivative of F divided by Y1, Y2 prime minus Y1 uh, prime Y2 times Y2. Sorry. And C2 is going to be uh, 1 over A times the antiderivative of F Y1 divided by Y1 Y2 prime minus Y1 prime Y2. Well, and notice that the denominator is the same. And this denominator is usually denoted as W. So this is y1 y2 um, prime minus y1 prime y2 and if you are familiar with linear algebra so this is in fact the determinant of the matrix y1 y2 y1 prime y2 prime so if you are not familiar with determinants so you, you can just memorize it in, the, in this form if you are then it is this <coughs> You form a matrix whose first row is your two uh, solutions of the homogeneous differential equation, and the second row are well, it's two first derivatives, and it is called the row scale. Rows. Yeah, it has a special name, and it is in fact important for the theory of differential equations. It's just that I'm not going to cover this in in, in, in this course, but it has a special name, right? So, right. So let me just just. Uh, okay, so the, this is again the formula, uh, so you can remember them in this um, particular form. I personally find it more convenient to try to, to try them with the integral. So then let me give you this, uh, the, this formula. Um, so I would write it like this. So I, I would write it C1 is minus 1 over A. The integral of f times y2 divided by w dx and c2 is 1 over a times the integral of f y1 over w 
dx, where w is our our wrong, the wrong scheme. Okay, so let me uh, show you how we can do it in this particular case, right? So second is in fact one over cosine x, <coughs> and of course it's not just a combination. Well, it is not a linear combination of sine and cosine, so we cannot use. Uh, the method of undetermined coefficients, and instead we have to use this variation of parameters. Okay, so first I'm going to solve the uh, homogeneous differential equation. So the homogeneous differential equation is y prime plus y is zero. So the characteristic equation is lambda squared plus one is zero. So lambda is plus minus i. So there is no real part, so y is going to be like e to the power zero x times c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x. e to the zero x is just one, so there, there is no e to the zero x. So it's just cosine x plus sine x, right? So one of them is y1, the other one is y2. So it doesn't matter which is which, it's up to you. So let's say y1 is cosine x y2 is going to be sine x, all right? So now the first step in applying the, the variation of parameters is to find the Ronskin. scan. So the Ronskin scan is, again, so for me, it is more convenient to write it in the determinant form, so it's up to you. <coughs> so if you um, want to memorize it in the form y1, y2 prime minus y1 prime y2, you can. For me, it's just more convenient to write it like the first row of the matrix is y1 and y2, so which is cosine x and sine x, and the second row is the first derivative, so the first derivative of the cosine is minus sine, and the first derivative of the sine is, is cosine x. Okay, and now cosine x times cosine x is cosine squared x, cosine x squared, minus sine x times minus sine x is plus sine squared x, which is 1. So, okay, so here the wrong scan is just one. So, so we are somewhat lucky. All right, so now um, our a is also one. So notice that there is no coefficient in front of uh, y double prime. So which means that a is one. So, and again, it is very convenient. So, um, so what do we do now? Um, Now we just apply the equation. So C1 of x is going to be minus 1 over 1. Uh, the integral of f. So my f is, is this, right? So this is my f. Secant x. And secant is really 1 over cosine x. So 1 over cosine x times y2. So my y, y2 is sine x. So sine x divided by the wrong scan, so this is just 1, dx. All right, so let me remove all the this ones. So just dx, so this is essentially just the tangent x, sine x over cosine x is tangent x, but in order to <coughs> integrate it, you don't really need to know that it's tangent. Uh, so what you do is you do something like a u substitution. Um, so u is cosine x, essentially, right? And then you will, because sine x is the derivative of, of the cosine x. And this is going to be a loan of absolute value of cosine x. Right, so let, let me just check if I did it right. Uh, so the derivative of ln of cosine x is going to be, uh, the derivative of, of ln is one over cosine x. Well, I wrote the absolute value yeah, the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x. Okay, correct. Yeah, it's precisely where I started. Uh, the... Yeah, okay. Strictly speaking, we should use the absolute value here because cosine of x could be positive or could be negative. All right. Uh, and then again, so since we are interested in only in one particular... Uh, answer we don't need plus constant here c2 of x is going to be uh now i've got to i'm going to use the formula for c2 it's going to be one over uh sorry this should be a of course 
1 over 1. Uh, integral f is 1 over cosine x. y1 is cosine x divided by 1 dx. Okay, so let me simplify this. Well, 1 over 1, so everything simplifies, so it's just, just 1. Actually. Uh, and this is just, just x, really. Okay, so that's basically it. So it means that our uh, particular solution of the differential equation is c1 of x, so, so which is ln of absolute value of cosine x, times y1, which is cosine x, plus c2 of x is x, and uh, y2 is sine x. Right, and the final answer is that it's going to be this plus the general solution of the um, uh, homogeneous differential equation. Right, so the final answer is going to be basically the particular solution, so which is ln of absolute value of cosine x times cosine x, cosine x plus x times sine x plus x times sine x plus c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x. Well, and these c1 and c2 are constants. So c1 and c2 are constants. So initially we wanted to find c1 and c2 as functions of x, but we it was just a trick to, to, to solve the equation, right? So and this is my final answer. So this is the general solution of the non-homogeneous differential equation. So notice that here it was kind of relatively simple, but usually it's not that simple. So usually it, it takes, you know, quite some effort to uh, to follow the, the, this method. It's not rocket science in, in the sense that, that, that there is a recipe here how that, that you, you will always, you know, get the answer if you follow that, that recipe, but you probably need to practice a little bit and if you see something like this in the final exam um, you may want to start early because it takes quite some time to, to do this so just something like the method of Lagrange multipliers uh, is a bit time consuming so the method of variation of parameters is also a bit time consuming okay so that's basically all that I wanted to show you. So here is the same uh, answer in printed form. And that's the end of the lecture. And this is the last lecture in the course. So um, I hope you enjoyed it.